Hi guys, tonight we're in Niagara Falls, Ontario, checking out Ripley's Believe It or Not. I've been to a couple other Ripley's attractions. There was one that we went to in Oregon, and I've been to one in New York in Times Square as well. So this is the third Ripley's attraction I've been to. They're always good for a laugh. Let's go in and explore. Hey, starting us off, here is a life-size fighting tiger made in Thailand from hundreds of recycled car tires. Look at that. Hanging from the ceiling, an animatronic junk fish. Very cool. It's like a steampunk piranha. Wait a minute, who's hanging out out front? It's the, I recognize you, it's the Cuban eye popper. A genuine car parts robot built from hundreds of used car parts. I think this is how they make new transformers. And heading in to the auditorium. The Empire State Building, the tallest building in the world, stood Robert Wadlow. To this day, the tallest man in modern history. Believe it or not. It says he's seven feet sitting down. I wonder if this is true to life. Those are those hands are gigantic. Oh. Oh, here he goes. Whew. Look at that. Here's a camel bone carving containing over 5,000 individually carved and glued pieces of bone. It says this piece took 40 carvers over six months to complete. Luckily, no camels were harmed in the making of this piece. Over here's the lighthouse man from China. This happy fellow bored a hole in his head, wore a lighted candle in it, and provided guided tours of his town at night. Here's a jade rickshaw made of over 2,000 pounds of jade. This carved rickshaw is a replica of a 20th century ancient Chinese emperor's personal transport. Some other bone-based artifacts, a Tibetan human bone rosary. That's pretty creepy. Dinosaur bones and skin down there. Fossilized fern. A fossilized Gallimimus dinosaur arm. And a Plesiosaurus vertebrae. The Mona Lisa. Made out of nail polish, of course. I think that's actually quite a bit bigger than the actual Mona Lisa. When I was in France, I went to see it, and it's much, much smaller in person than you would think. This is probably much larger than the real Mona Lisa. And also made out of nail polish. Got some temple masks up there. Down here, a Tibetan bone outfit. And a giant Buddha head made out of nuts and washers. Some more Tibetan artifacts. This is a Tibetan Mahakala skull mask. And over here, a Tibetan trumpet, purchased by Robert Ripley himself and used by monks in Tibet. And down here, a Tibetan nomad's bronze mug. Some other gruesome artifacts, a vampire killing kit down there. An exorcism kit over there. And over here, I don't like this, Widow's Finger Chopper. When the spouse died, widows in primitive tribes in New Guinea would chop off a finger from each hand. Some shadow art. You can see we've got some elephants on that side. And then the light shining from a different angle makes, I'm not sure what. 
Here's a Monolophosaurus that lived in Asia about 170 million years ago. Oh. More skeletons, an African elephant skull. Do fossilized dino dung down here. Some dinosaur eggs. And a woolly mammoth skull and jaw right there. I don't like this. A collection of belly button lint. We are some of the human artists that were found by Robert Whitney. I bet you are wondering what happened to me. You want to ask, don't you? Well, my head wasn't always this small, but I've always been this good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was captured by the Havaro tribe in South America, and they did this to me. Yeah. Something about shrunken heads being important for trophies and powerful totems. And I like being powerful. Mm. I'm part of a Padam tribe from Southeast Asia. Legend has it that my ancestors first wrapped their legs and arms with metal coils in order to deter bandits and soldiers. But as time went on, they became an integral part of our culture. Cayenne women can stretch their necks up to 15 inches. My head is amazing in a way, too. You may have noticed a unique creature growing from it. I was just a farmer in a remote Chinese village when I met this Russian banker. He took a picture of me and sent it to Robert Whitley, who turned this into a famous cartoon. The horn is actually called an osteoma, and scientists are still unsure what causes this rare condition. You know, Ripley made a cartoon about me too. He once called me the most remarkable man in the world, even though I was born without legs. I could do anything a normal person could do and more. In my sideshow, I was well known by one-arm handstands. Some people still ask me, do I wish I had legs? But why would I? Then I'd have to press my pants. Get it? Press my pants? <laughs> Down here is a figure of General Tom Thumb who performed for P.T. Barnum. He only stood three feet four inches tall. Here's a sideshow freak, the Lizard Man, who spent over 700 hours getting his body tattooed. He also got his tongue bifurcated. Pretty creepy. And this is the three-legged man from Sicily who unsurprisingly happened to be a soccer star. The third leg was a couple of inches shorter than the other two. The long-nosed man, Thomas Wetters from England, had a nose that was seven and a half inches long, also performed in the sideshow. Here's one of Wadlow's shoes. It says a custom leather shoe, 37 AA. It says from 1936 to 1940, Wadlow toured Eastern US endorsing Peter's shoes. Through the door, we've got some animal oddities. Here's a sawfish beak. It's a member of the Ray family and has this saw-like snout. Oh. Down here, a little two-headed kitten. And then a three-legged chick. A rather disgustingly large cow hairball. And why not a two-headed calf? Okay, let's play a game. Over here it says, which of these creatures are real? Only two of these creatures are real. The other are imposters. So let's see, there's a fish up there. It says there's a fur-bearing trout. Looks legit. We have oh, some sort of salmon there. That looks okay. Some sort of Fiji mermaid type of creature. Obviously legit. Down here, albino beaver. Why not? And Bigfoot. All right, let's see if we're right. Well, obviously Bigfoot. What? 
Oh, no. No, actually, I'm going to say the albino beaver. Bing! And... Fur-bearing trout? No. Sparkly salmon? No, I'm going to say regular salmon right there. Yep, that's it. I know my creatures, but I love a Fiji mermaid. Some more curiosities, obviously some anthropomorphic squirrels. This little guy's riding a boat down here. A unicorn deer skull. I guess it's an actual deer that has a single horn growing out of its head. Although we've got a two-headed lamb here. And a cyclops pig. In here, goat bagpipes. I think that's enough said. Ripley's Cabinet of Curiosities, we got the Echidna. Also known as the Spiky Anteater. Oh, I like how these have, they have these screen overlays, that's kind of cool. Here's a Cyclops Lamb Skull. There's a birth defect with a normal two-eyed animal was born with only one single eye. Philippine Island Trophy Skull. It says these trophy heads won the head taker, the respect of his fellows. Looks like he's got a human skull on top of that skull. Nail art. It's kind of unique. Using all different types of nails to make the pattern, different size heads on those nails. Cool. These wood faces are kind of hilarious. A friend told me of a German scientist who ventured into the land of the Shua in hopes of learning their secrets. So More tribal artifacts. There's a headhunter's carved skull down there. Ooh. A human skin mask covered in actual skin. Of course, it wouldn't be Ripley's without a collection of shrunken heads. Ripley's museums have over a hundred genuine human shrunken heads. And there's one of them. More unbelievable Robert Ripley oddities. Famous since 1918. Got a mummified falcon god here. Egyptian mummified temple cat. That's up there. Of course, an Egyptian mummified head. An Ushabti figure. Looks like we're exploring the Ripley's warehouse here. Most of these things are hidden, but let's see if we can take a sneak peek. Leg shackles and a medieval spiked crown. You never know what you're going to get. How about down here? Oh, there I am. Hi. Two-headed calf skeleton. This is like a little surprise. It's a fun game. Up here, I can kind of see this one, but it's uh, got some nut and bolt sculptures. Arabian Jambia Dagger. I guess this is probably a cool way for them to uh, change some of the exhibits around without having to retheme the whole area. Uh, here's a Image Magic Fire Doll. This old doll from the founder of Modern Wiccan was set on fire in belief that the victim she represented would suffer burning pain. Got your typical tin can truck. Coal statues, bronze paperweights, and let's see, last one, 
a medieval torture glove, a wrist bone crusher, and some medieval spiked wrist shackles. Hey, here's a Niagara-themed little artifact. It says this is Charles Bloden's bike, who rode it on a tightrope over Niagara Falls. It's a dress made of the pages of a book. Was that one that Lady Gaga wore? No, I think she had this one. This is the toilet paper dress. This is actually a cool historical artifact. A little out of place, but it's a section of the Berlin Wall. I'm confused. It says enter, but it also says it's a restricted area. Let's go for it. Oh, I don't like creepy crawlies. Live animals. Ah! Some compressed air in there. What's that? Scorpion? Let's see over here. Scrap metal motorcycle. It's kind of fun. I like this area. This area is a little bit uh, interactive of sorts. They've got things that you can press and I don't like this. Danger, keep it. Oh. Well, that's nice. You fooled me once with the compressed air and totally redeemed yourself with a nice popsicle wagon. Ooh, got somebody else. Pecan Mini Mouse. Okay. Titanic Coal from the engine room. Let's see, press there. Yes, that's from the Titanic's engine room. Love Titanic artifacts. And also nautical. A matchstick Spanish galleon. This section's kind of cool since we're in Niagara Falls. This talks about the Niagara Falls daredevils. Over here is William Kendall, the first person to swim across the Whirlpool Rapids at Niagara Falls. Charles Blondin crossed the Niagara Falls on a tightrope while pushing a man in a wheelbarrow. So Charles got all the credit, but I want to know who was the other guy that got volunteered to be pushed across the falls in a wheelbarrow? Here's a Candy Art E.T. That's what happened to all my Twizzlers. A bottle cap Amelia Earhart. Scrabble tiles in the shape of Frankenstein's monster. A Lego Robert Ripley. Is there any kind of Lego sets they don't make these days? Here's a shark made out of pop can poles. This is awesome. This is just perfect. A Vincent Price shrunken head craft kit. What kid wouldn't love that? Vortex tunnel ahead. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. Made it. Thanks for checking out Ripley's Niagara Falls with us. Remember to keep exploring and click the link above for more Niagara Falls attractions.